This video is about the mole, molar mass and Avogadro's constant. And we'll start by looking at something you're a bit more familiar with, which is dozen. So, you know when we say one dozen eggs, then that just means that there's 12 eggs. And we can also use it with other numbers like two dozen eggs, which would be 24 eggs. Mole is just another number like dozen. So we could have one mole of eggs, um, which would be 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 eggs. So it's just a number like dozen, but it's much, much bigger. And eggs are about the same size as table tennis balls, which means that if we had a mole of eggs on Earth, it would cover the whole of the Earth up to a depth of 40 kilometers. So it would be quite a few eggs, but we could also have two moles of eggs, which would be 12.04 times 10 to the power of 23 eggs. We don't really use moles when we're counting things like eggs because there's no way we would have that many eggs. So we usually use it when we're talking about atoms or molecules instead. But it doesn't matter, we can change all of these into atoms and molecules. So instead of two moles of eggs, we could have two moles of molecules, which would be the same number of molecules as we had when we're talking about eggs. And we could have one mole of atoms, which would be... 6 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. And we could do the same with dozen. We could have two dozen atoms, which would be 24 atoms. Or we could have one dozen molecules, which would be just 12 molecules. So the special thing about this new number, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23, is that 12 grams of carbon-12 contains this number of atoms. And that's the definition of one mole. And we call this constant Na, which stands for Avogadro's constant. And the value of that is simply 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 per mole. So we're shortening the four-letter word mole into just three letters to make it easy to write. And when we're saying per mole, we just mean that that's how many molecules or atoms or eggs or anything that we have in each mole. And obviously we don't just use this for carbon, we can use it of any substance. So one mole of any substance contains the same number of molecules or atoms as there are in 12 grams of carbon-12. So let's write down that number again so that we have it on this new page. So Avogadro's constant, the value is 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 per mole. And we're going to do two examples. So first of all, how many atoms are there in 4 grams of carbon-12? Well, we already know that 12 grams contains 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 atoms. And 4 grams is just the same as 12 divided by 3 grams, which means that the number of atoms is going to have to be that number that we had divided by 3. And if we round that to three significant figures, we get 2.01 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. And next one, how many atoms are there in 120 grams of carbon-12? Well, that's not very different from what we just did. So again, we know that 12 grams contains 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. And 120 grams is simply 12 times 10 grams. So we got 10 times as much as we had when we had 12 grams. So we can just change the, the power to 24. So we're going to have 6.02 times 10 to the power of 24 atoms. And we actually did something interesting here. We used a formula that we're going to introduce on the next slide, which is the molar mass formula. So when we did 120 equals 12 times 10, we said that the mass that we have was 120 grams and the number of moles that we have was 10 because we had 10 times as much as one mole and the 12 is the molar mass of carbon-12 so molar mass is how many grams one mole weighs so we're going to look at this formula in a bit more detail so the mass of one mole of a substance is called the molar mass. And molar masses are listed in the periodic table. 
and the units of molar mass, interestingly enough, is grams per mole. So make sure you know that it's not kilograms per mole, it's grams per mole. So the formula that we kind of already used was that the molar mass is equal to the mass divided by how many moles we have. That just comes from the definition of molar mass. So let's get some molar masses from the periodic table. So here's what the periodic table looks like and you see all these little numbers on the top. They tell you the molar mass of each element. And they actually take into account that there are lots of different isotopes of each element. So this would be in naturally occurring iron, for example. The molar mass would be 55.8 grams per mole. So if we write down a few of these molar masses, we've got for carbon it's 12.0, oxygen is 16.0, hydrogen 1.01 .01, and iron 55.8. So now let's do some calculations with this formula. So let's calculate the masses of a few different things. So first of all, what's the mass of 5 moles of hydrogen? So just hydrogen atoms, not molecules. Well, we can just rearrange the formula that we just had. And we can say that the mass, little m, is equal to big M times n. So the, the mass is the molar mass times the number of moles. And that makes sense in terms of units, doesn't it? Because we've got grams equals grams per mole times mole. So we put our numbers in, 1.01 .01 times 5. And that gives us 5.05 .05 grams for hydrogen. So now let's look at 3 moles of O2. So I should have written it, that a bit nicer. But So it says O2, so that's oxygen gas. So it's a molecule with two oxygen atoms. So if in the periodic table we actually saw the molar mass for each atom, not molecule. So that means that if we want the molar mass of a molecule, we have to multiply by how many atoms there are. So that means that for oxygen molecules, O2, we're going to have a molar mass of 16.0 times 2, which is 32.0. So now we can plug that into the formula. So we've got that the mass is the molar mass times the number of moles, which was just 3. So we multiply 32 by 3 and we get 96.0 grams. And last last example we'll do is... 0.43 moles of H2O. So in H2O we obviously have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So we're going to have to find our molar mass by by adding all of those up. So we've got two hydrogen atoms will be 2 times 1.01 .01, and then we're adding on one oxygen atom which is 16 and that gives us 18.02 grams per mole. And then we plug that into our formula. So we multiply it by 0 0.43 and we'll put that into our calculator. And we get about 7.7 .7 grams.